These days, the vast majority of new passenger vehicles are equipped with front disc brakes, and some also come with rear disc brakes. But the beat still goes on for drum brakes. While disc brakes consist of a brake caliper, two brake pads, and a rotor, drum brakes are comprised of a round drum containing pistons and two brake shoes. As far as stopping the vehicle, drum brakes work quite well. However, disc brakes caught on in popularity because they're better at dissipating the heat generated by brake friction. And that's really the challenge with all braking. When too much heat builds up in either the fluid, the friction material, or the rotors or drums, there's a loss of braking force, which is known as brake fade. The goal with all braking systems is to remove the heat. Disc brakes do this very well, especially those with vented rotors. They have a constant airflow passing over them and through them, allowing them to dissipate heat rapidly. Heat retention is the only real drawback to drum brakes. Even though most of the larger drums have cooling fins cast into them, it's still inherent to their design that the heat is trapped inside the drum and simply takes longer to dissipate. But operationally, drum brakes offer a number of advantages over disc brakes. One advantage is, is they're self-energizing. This means as the brakes are applied, rotation of the drum will draw the shoes into it, effectively applying additional pressure to the brakes without additional effort from the driver. And if you've ever wondered why drum brakes seem to last so long, it's because the surface area of the shoes is much greater than that of disc pads, so the brakes can perform the same amount of work with less effort. Most new vehicles still use drum brakes on the rear wheels, and it's not just because they're less expensive than disc brakes. One advantage of drum brakes on the rear is the parking brake. The levers and mechanisms that make the parking brake work are easily and inexpensively incorporated into the drum brake. In addition, the self-energizing property of drum brakes not only works in either direction, but also adds to their gripping power, so the parking brake is very effective for heavier or loaded vehicles, as well as forward or backward, meaning parking on a hill is no problem. So what makes drum brakes wear out? Naturally, the brake shoes can wear out, and the drums as well. All brake drums have a wear limit for the inner diameter. In many cases, the drums can be resurfaced on a brake lathe. However, if they're outside of their wear limit, they need to be replaced. Some of the most common problems include leaking or seized wheel cylinders, rusted or broken springs and hardware, leaking axle seals, which allows differential oil to contaminate the brake linings, and seized parking brake mechanisms and cables. Rust also can take its toll on the backing plates as well. If your customer is performing a drum brake repair, there are a few additional items you might want to recommend. It's never a bad idea to ask if they need a standard hardware kit, which includes return springs, hold down springs, pins and cups, and adjustment window plugs. Most hardware kits don't include parking brake adjusters and hardware, but they're an essential part of brake operation, so you might want to recommend those as well. Other helpful items include brake lubricant, parking brake cables, backing plates, and brake cleaner. And special tools such as brake adjusting spoons and hold down and return spring tools can make the job go much easier. Thanks for watching.